Hey, uh, my name is Steve Oatley. I own TLG Carrier Services. I also um, own a bunch of different other companies, but I am making this video basically to, this is my first video. I don't do the YouTube thing much. I don't do anything, but it would take me way too long to type a big forum post or blog post or something to relay the same message that I'm going to relay now. Uh, this is pretty much for those people that are on the Facebook groups and all that saying that, oh, they hate dispatchers and dispatchers steal from, steal from me and they do this and I don't make any money because of dispatchers or brokers or anything. You guys, you know who you are. You're the same people that, that post to these Facebook groups and do all that stuff. Uh, and for all the new people, just listen, just listen to this. You know, you'll get a good understanding and, and you'll be able to see through some of the bullshit um, in terms of posts. So again, I paste, I, I post to uh, Facebook groups every day, um, either to advertise for my trucking uh, dispatch service, uh, to help companies get started up, to deal with their filings and all that stuff. I'm not going to go into costs and all that because I don't want this to turn into an advertising video. I'll probably end up making some later, but this isn't this isn't for that purpose. This is purely to educate on what a freight dispatcher does, the art of dispatching, and <laughs> what the real deal is with dispatchers and whether or not they're legal or or not, and and how they could benefit you. Um, so, with that said, so I post daily. I go on there and I advertise my company. I try to get other carriers to sign up. I try to get dispatchers to sign up with us. I. Uh, um, you know, we do a whole bunch of stuff. So basically what we do from top to bottom is is we find carrier's freight, we book the freight, we handle all the paperwork with it, the tracking, we send bills of lading, and we essentially act as if you hired an in-house dispatcher. Um, what, and I, sorry, I keep laughing at myself because I kind of think, you know, I keep thinking about all these comments that I read um, yesterday and today on, on these groups. And that's the, the whole reason why I'm making the video is just because they're pretty damn stupid. And... The problem is that everybody on Facebook or anybody on any of the forums or shit, some people I talk to on the phone every day, they'll sit there and they'll really think that they know more about um, everything. It doesn't even matter what it is. You know, that the cloud, the sky could have no clouds in the sky, and yet they're, they're still going to be like, no, oh, no, it's pretty cloudy today. You know, they just, it's the argumentative thing. And so, as my wife says, I should just let that shit go. Uh, and I, I typically do, but it's <clears throat> it's becoming such a common thing that now I feel like I just want to address it once and for all um, and hope that it understands, uh, th that people understand. So my background, I used to own a trucking company, a fairly decent sized one. I also have, you know, a combined with all aspects of the industry, I've got about 15 years uh, working in logistics from being a freight broker with some of the largest agents from being, you know, being on the executive staff of some large 3PLs and carriers um, to owning my own trucks and managing my own fleet of 20 trucks. Um, the, the thing that I get all the time is I'll have people call and ask my experience, which is fully understandable. It's you're hiring someone to actually find freight for you. It's we're cheaper than um, getting somebody to um, we're cheaper than hiring somebody to work in your office, but at the same time, you want to make sure that they're good. It's the same thing as when I hire someone to work as a dispatcher. They're independent contractors, so I'm limited in how much direction I can give them, but at the same time, I can make sure they work to the specifications that I set. Otherwise, uh, I'll shit can them. Um, it's the same thing. I expect the same from the the carriers that we work with, that they you either like us or you don't. And if we don't provide the service that you want, you shit can us. That's, it's pretty simple. Um, at any rate, so I'm going to address the major concerns that I have. You know, I do go off on tangents very clearly. Uh, we're four minutes in and I just went off on the tangent. So basically the, the, the reason why I'm deciding to make this video is there's, I'm going to cover a couple of topics. One, why dispatchers can be a helpful solution to your company Two, whether dispatching is even legal or not. Three, the difference between a freight broker and a dispatcher, because apparently a lot of you don't seem to understand that. And four, how a dispatcher, not specifically us, uh, can help your business. Uh, so I don't remember the order, so I'm just going to start with the first one, which is the biggest thing that everybody always wants to argue about, is that freight freight dispatchers are reg skirting this and that and this and that. Listen, there's no regulations that say that a freight dispatcher cannot work with more than one carrier. Uh, there is regulations that say that someone ha to profit in independent or as part of interstate commerce, 
needs to um, be a freight broker if they're facil facilitating the, the transportation. The difference between us is we get a power of attorney by each carrier. Each carrier that we sign, uh, that we sign up signs a power of attorney allowing us to book freight on their behalf. We're not booking freight under our MC number. We're not billing the shippers. We're not billing the carriers or the uh, brokers. We bill the carrier directly. When we book a load, it's, it's me saying, hey, this is Steve Oatley with Joe Schmo's Trucking. It's not Steve Oatley with TLG Carrier Services. The reason why we do that is because the load's not to us, it's to the carrier. And that's why we always explain to our carriers, cancellations and all that shit, they're on you. It makes us look bad because we have relationships with a lot of these brokers because we work with so many carriers. And, and, and we're pretty strict on our guidelines in terms of what uh, our qualifications for a carrier and cancellations and all that shit, but I'm not going to talk too much about that. If you cancel on drive, uh, on brokers, they're eventually just going to be like, hey, listen, I'm not working with you anymore. They post you know, fake things on carrier 411, all that crap. Um, the, the truth of the matter is we are a dispatcher. We're, we're a legal entity because we are operating on behalf of of the carrier as a bona fide agent. A lot of you guys will jump in this now and say, ooh, he said bona fide agent. Bona fide agent, based on some legal definition by uh, an unknown guy that defrauded you know, millions of, of owner operators, take that as you will. Um, his legal definition of bona fide agent means that they can only work with one agent or one carrier, which is it's, it's a made up thing. You can be a bona fide agent because each power of attorney, when we work for that carrier, we're working in the benefit for the benefit of that carrier. We're not working for the benefit of any other carrier. We don't have, our carriers are pretty spread out. Granted, we do have carriers that are in the same areas, but none of them do the same thing. Some run out west, some run east coast, some, and yeah, maybe as we get more and more trucks, they, they'll, they'll run all over, but for right now, they're pretty much stuck into the areas they go. Uh, so when we book a load for a carrier, we're working for that carrier. We're booking the load and trying to make the most money. Now here's another thing that's kind of funny is people say why would I give up a percentage to handle or to, to pay a dispatcher to do something that I could do? <clears throat> I'll answer this very quickly in two different ways. One, we we literally stare at our computer for eight to ten hours a day booking freight. You drive a truck, all right? So yeah, can you stop? Can you do it yourself? Absolutely. Can you pull over and spend your thirty minute breaks booking and, and doing a load from from? The original search to getting the rate confirmation, signing and sending it back. Could you do it yourself in 30 minutes if you're already set up with the carrier? Yeah. Could you do it if you're not? So let me explain to all the new guys how it works. Um, this is how a carrier would do it while they're driving down the road because you, you or, or while you're on break. So you have to take out your little cell phone. You're going on your cell phone. You're looking at either Trucker's Edge or Dad or one of the other. Well, Dat and Trucker's are the same. You know, uh, Truck Stop or Dat or Keep Trucking, whatever the different load boards are you use. <clears throat> you find a load that you like. You call the broker and you say, hey, listen, I'm interested in this load. They offer you 1100 bucks. You're like, hey, I'm going to get this guy. I'll take 1125 which is stupid because you can really get up to $200 more. As a broker, when I was a broker, there's, you know, we had our profit is where that extra money comes out. So if they're offering 1100 bucks, it's because we quoted our customer probably 13 14 15 1600 bucks, depending on how greedy the broker is. Um, it's not something we did. We were on a strict hundred dollar per thousand. That's what we did for as with myself and I had thirty sub agents under me. We booked almost a million dollars a month in revenue. Uh, at any rate, so when you call and they say, "Yeah, I could do fifty bucks more," okay, well, you just lost a little bit of money that a trained dispatcher would know. Hey, I can I can go a little bit more because they know what the lane's paying. They have the time to actually sit and go. Okay, let me look up what the loads uh, have paid for the past fifteen days. Because it says it right on that. Whether or not you use it or not, you don't know. Or you could say, I'm only making two bucks a mile, so I don't care. If as long as it's two bucks a mile, that's good, but you're leaving money on the table that a dispatcher can get for you. All right, so skip all that stuff. You book the load. The carrier says, hey, or the broker says, all right, you're not set up with us. I got to send you the packet. So your your time is pretty much done with your drive or with your brakes, and now you got to drive. So you have, you're sitting there driving your truck. He sends you the packet to your cell phone. <clears throat> Now, there's, there's two different types of packets. One, there's long-ass 15-page packets where the carrier needs you to initial each page or the broker needs you to initial each page, uh, fill out all this remedial information that you've already filled out with every other broker, but you got to do it again because he uses his own system. And the second way is using like a RMIS or I think Truck Stop has one, DAT has one. It's an onboarding thing. It stores all your information, so you just got to click a couple of buttons after the first time you fill it out, and you're good. So, but for the ones that have to fill out the heart, the actual paper packets, so you got to fill it all out on your cell phone 
and then send it back to them with your copy of your authority, your insurance, your W-9, all that other stuff that they ask typically. And then once that's done, you sit there and wait. So let's say you've, you've, it took you 20 minutes to fill out the packet because you're pretty good at it. More likely, it took you about a half an hour to pull over, to handle the packet on your phone. Maybe you got a laptop or something so you can deal with it. Or you, got, you send it to your wife who's out grocery shopping and she now needs to run home to fill out this packet and print it out, fill it out, and scan it back in. All the while, the broker keeps saying, hey, yeah, I'm holding the load for you. And then, so you send in your paperwork and then you call the broker and you're like, yeah, I got it. And he's like, all right, it's with my carrier compliance team. And you're like, okay. And so you wait. 45 minutes goes by. <clears throat> you call him back. Two things happen. One, he either says, yep, you're all set up. He sends you the rate con. You're all good. Secondly, he said, oh, and this happens a lot. All you guys know it. He says, oh, you know what? My other co-broker booked it, and, I, and I, I forgot about it. Sorry. So you just spent all that time filling out a packet. Now what's happening? You have to drive because you're going to be late for your delivery, and you don't have any time to find freight. So what do you do? You pull over, you miss your delivery, you try to find another load. Instead, you could just hire a dispatcher because we fill out the packet. Eight minutes is how long it takes me to fill out a 15-page 15, 15 packet by hand. Eight minutes. Uh, I send it in, and then I hound the shit out of that broker because I was a broker. So I understand that they can get carried away. They could book another load. They could book your load on accident, or they could just simply forget about you because in their head, they've already assigned the load to you, and they may forget that they have to send you the pack and all that shit. Uh, and that does happen. Um, I'm, not, I'm not by any means shitting on brokers. There are brokers I'll shit on, but not right now. Maybe a different video. Um, and then you're, and then you're back to this drawing board. Here's the process with the dispatcher. We call the broker. We say, all right, the load's 1100 bucks. We say, oh, can you pay 1100 Or if they say it's 1100 bucks, we say, hey, can you pay 12 Or typically what we shoot for is 10% more. So if they say it's a $2,000 load, we're going to try it for twenty two. You know, and that's that's typically how we work. That's just, it's an internal process. We always try to get our commission. So if you're at a 3% uh, fact or a dispatcher rate for us, we're going to at least try to get the 3% of the load. So that way you're getting the original load cost as long as it fits your guidelines. So if you tell us you run for two bucks a mile, then we're not even gonna look at anything that's under two bucks a mile. If it's over two bucks a mile, we still always try to get more money. It's not like if you say, hey, I want that thousand, or I want thousand miles and it's and I want two bucks a mile. And we say, oh, here's a load going a thousand miles paying two grand. It's not like, hey, yep, we'll take that load. No, we always negotiate. That's part of the, our job as dispatchers is to negotiate. Plus we make more money. So if we dispatch out a higher load, you get paid more money, which means that our percentage goes up. It's kind of a no-brainer. It doesn't even matter if you're on the flat rate because of the way I pay the dispatchers, it, it, they're all based on the revenue. Um, so we call and we say all that. He sends us a packet. We don't need to pull over. We don't need to do it on our cell phones. We do it on our computers or we print it out, fill it out, scan it, send it back. Literally about eight minutes from the time we receive it till we send it back. And then we call and we call and we call and we keep calling because we don't mark that load uh, we don't mark your truck as a vet, or, you know, occupied until we actually have the Raycon. We send it to you and signed it, send it back to the broker. Um, so we call and call. He gets you all set up. We get the Raycon or he says, hey, we moved to another one. We don't need to sit there and wait. We, call, we can start looking for another load. Then what happens? And then I'll just keep, I'll keep going. So we book you a load. You go and pick it up. You're now going to thousand mile away to make your delivery we now start looking for your your pickup for when you deliver um and we keep doing it and we keep looking and we typically will book your 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 reload same day as we book your pickup so your reload may be next day or two days from now we'll book it in advance to try to get it because that also means for us this is some secrets to dispatching for us it means we don't have to look for your truck for three or four or five days so we could spend time booking freight for other trucks and that's where we make additional money um, hence, you know, looking for, you know, more trucks to join our, our, uh, company at any rate. Um, so that's why a dispatcher is beneficial. On top of that, I personally don't give out a single one of my driver's cell phones to any broker, especially the big broker. That's three letters and ends with an L and begins with a T. I don't give out any, and you know why any, any carrier that's been operating for a while, I give out my cell phone, my desk phone and my personal cell phone. So then when a carrier call or when TQL or oh shit, I said it, uh, when, a broker calls you and they say, hey, listen, I need a tracking update. And you say, dude, it's 1230 in the morning. Why are you calling me? It's not the driver that's getting all ticked off and woken up when he only has eight hours or or something like that. You know, uh, that it's just one of the services. We handle all the tracking calls. We handle and we constantly update them. You know, we have 
we're building an app now to send out to our drivers so they can fully automate everything. It'll be on the app so they can send in paperwork, they can choose picked up, delivered, we'll send our tenders right to them, plus they get the rate confirmations because they're the ones who are responsible for billing the client. We'll make them an invoice, but each carrier is the one booking the load. It's not us, even though we're the ones that are physically booking the load, they're booked under the carrier's authority. So the carrier still has to send it to his factory and company or we can send it if we have that relationship built um, and all that stuff. But we handle the tracking, we'll handle all the paperwork requests from the, car uh, from the broker because they typically have our, our email on file. Most of them do for the carriers we work with. Um, it eliminates the need to to deal with the headaches of running your own business. You know, we deal with all the back office stuff except for collections, unless you partnered with us with a, like a factoring dispatch combo. And then shit, we'll even handle your collection. So really you're just driving and getting paid. Uh, it, I understand that it is something you can do. It is something you can completely do. Hell, our dispatcher training is, is built in a way where we'll train you to dispatch um, and then you have the option of either just using our service to start your own dispatch company, because I don't care, you're not competition to us, to using our service to learning how to dispatch yourself and watching dispatchers actually dispatch in real life to determine whether or not you could dispatch. I don't care. It's not my, my the reason why I started this company was to help people. I, yeah, it was to make money as well, but it's to help people, to make money for you. You know, the, if you're, if, if we're dispatching the way we promise we're going to, we're going to make more money. If, if you're sitting there always spending all the time trying to find freight, you're never going to make any money because you're going to spend so much time looking at loads and driving your truck. And when you're driving your truck, you're missing loads that may be beneficial to you that could pick up when you deliver. You can't be on the phone all day long while, while you're driving because you'll end up killing someone or you'll end up just driving yourself mad, which is why we offer the service. A dispatcher and freight broker, they're different, very clear. Uh, for some of the new people that don't understand, a freight broker works with shippers to find carriers for their freight. A freight dispatcher works with carriers and deals with brokers to find shipments for their carriers. So you see how there's a difference? We work on behalf of the carrier to find freight. The, ship, or the broker works on behalf of the shipper. The broker bills the, sh the shipper. The carrier bills the broker. Does that make sense? Do I need to say it again? A freight broker works with a shipper. They take responsibility over freight. All you guys think they take responsibility over the freight to a certain extent. They take responsibility of payment to the freight, which is why they, they're required to have a surety bond. <clears throat> a lot of people say, <clears throat> well, a dispatcher is almost doing the same thing because they're participating in interstate commerce because they're profiting off of the value of a load. Hey, so is it an oil change guy that's changing the oil in your semi. That gets into another, uh, you know, or if a trucker at a truck stop goes in to buy a pack of cigarettes, he made that money by driving that truck. That truck stop who's selling him fuel is participating in interstate commerce because they're paying, they're doing fuel. How come they're not required to have a bond? A freight dispatch or a freight factoring company, they directly profit off interstate commerce. How come they're not required to have a bond? Do you see, there's a difference, you know, your truck breaks down, blows a tire, you need to have a road mechanic come out. How come they're not required to have a freight broker bond? So th this is kind of the thing that, that it's annoying. And those are all really trivial things. And you'll be like, oh, they're different. And they absolutely are. The, the point I'm trying to make is there is no regulation right now <clears throat> for what I already said. <clears throat> we act as bona fide agents for the carriers that we work with. Each individual carrier, we're not in competition with dispatching. You know, it's not like we say, oh, here's the load for one truck that, and if it doesn't fit on that truck or something else that we're just going to go give it to this guy and we'll try to get him for more money because he's a higher percentage. That's stupid. That's not the way we conduct our business. Uh, there, maybe there's other dispatch companies out there that do that. That's not, that's not what we do. Now, let me say something else about dispatch companies. A dispatch company will never pay the carrier, the, its client. So if you are one of these... If your least or if your dispatcher is one of these Texas companies, there's a couple of big ones out there that will find you loads, charge you a percentage off of the load, and then and you're operating under your own MC number, they find you a load, they charge you 10% of the load, and then pay you or and then they pay you directly. That it's illegal. They're acting as a broker, they're booking loads under their MC number, giving them to you, taking profit off of it. You're never gonna know how much it is. 
and then they're paying you. That is an illegal broker. That is not what we do as dispatchers. We work for the carriers. We book freight under their MC numbers, not our MC numbers, and and then and handle the shipments that way. So, listen, I'm tired of talking. Uh, this video is supposed to be like five minutes. We're going on 20. Uh, the fact is, is our, our company is a great dispatch service. I've been working in the industry for a long time. I'm not super... Uh, um, interesting so uh, if you actually stuck with us for the past 20 minutes congratulations uh, listen if you want a good dispatch service contact us I don't care really because we have a lot of trucks and we keep advertising trucks the purpose of this video is namely to explain what a freight dispatcher does how we differ from a broker and whether or not we're even legal now <clears throat> the only the only question I would or the only thing that I would put out is for the new guys that are actually looking for dispatch services <laughs> Be very, very selective on who you work with. <clears throat> We've had a lot of people that have come to us for jobs <clears throat> and uh, do our training. They don't really know what they're doing, even when they're done, you know, and they, they didn't fit as an agent, but they felt like they had enough tra training. We didn't feel comfortable with them managing our trucks. So what did they do? They went out and started their own dispatch companies. That is a problem. You know, and, 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 and there's so many people, you got people from running dispatch companies from, you know, overseas now too. United States dispatch companies where they're working overseas. It, that, I, I have no problem with people making money. Just make sure the person that you have managing your business um, is doing it correctly. That's it. All right. So I'll make other videos. My next video is going to be a cost per mile calculation to figure out what your, your, I guess what. I call break even per mile is and and I'll explain that in the next video stay tuned all right see ya